When is it safe to include an age in the minimum spanning tree? The crucial fact about age insertion is the following statement, which we will refer to as the cut property. 4.17. Assume that all age costs are distinct. Let S be any subset of nodes that is neither empty nor equal to all of V, and let H equals to VW be the minimal cost H with one end in S and the other in V minus S. Then every minimal spanning tree contains the H E. Proof that P be a spanning tree that does not contain E. We need to show that T does not have the minimal possible cost. We'll do this using an exchange argument. We'll identify an H E prime in T that is more expensive than E, and with the property exchanging E for E prime results in another spanning tree. This resulting spanning tree will then be cheaper than T as desired. The crux is therefore to find an age that can be successfully exchanged with E. Recall that the ends of E are V and W. T is a spanning tree, so there must be a path P in T from V to W. Start at V, suppose we follow the nodes of P in sequence. There is a first node W prime on P that is in V minus S that V prime in S be the node just before W prime on P, and uh, let E prime equals to V prime W prime be the age joining them. Thus, E prime is an age of T with one end in S, <coughs> and uh, the other in V minus S. So if we exchange uh, E for E prime, we get a set of ages T prime equals to T minus E prime, then add E. We claim that T prime is a spanning tree. Clearly, V T prime is connected, since uh, V T is connected. Note that T prime is T remove the H E prime, then insert H E. So any path in V T can used that used H E prime equals to V prime W prime can now be rerouted in V T prime to follow the portion of P from V prime to V, then the H E, and then the portion of P from W to W prime. To see that V T prime is also cyclic, note that the only cycle in V and T prime union E prime is the one composed of E and the path P and uh, this cycle is not present in V T prime due to the deletion of E prime. We noted above that the H E prime has one end in S and the, the other in V minus S, but E is the cheapest H with this property, and so C E is less than C E prime. This uh, inequality is strict, since no two ages have the same cost. Thus, the total cost of T prime is less than that of t as desired. The proof of uh, 4.17, the cut property, is a bit more subtle than it may first appear. To appreciate this subtlety, subtlety consider the following shorter but incorrect argument for 4.17. Let t be a spanning tree that does not contain e, since T is a spanning tree, it must contain an HF with one end in S and the other in V minus S. Since E is the cheapest H with this property, we have CE less than CF, and hence T minus uh, the HF union the HE is a spanning tree that is uh, cheaper than T. The problem with uh, this argument is not in the claim that F exists, or that T minus F union E is cheaper than T. The difficulty is that T minus F union E may not be a spanning tree as shown by the example of the HF in figure 4.10. The point is that we can't prove 4.17 by simply picking any H in T that crosses from S to V minus S. Some care must be taken to find the right one. The optimality of cross codes and the primes algorithm. We can now easily prove the optimality of both cross codes algorithm and the primes algorithm. 
The point is that both algorithms only include an age when it is justified by the cut property for point 17. For point 18, Kraskow's algorithm produces a minima spanning tree of G. For point 19, Prime's algorithm produces a minima spanning tree of G. Proof. For Prime's algorithm, it is also very easy to show that it only adds edges belonging to every minima spanning tree. Indeed, in each iteration of the algorithm, there is a set S which is subset equals to V on which a partial spanning tree has been constructed, and the node V and H E are added that minimize the quantity uh, mean of C E where E is uh, equal to U V and U is in S. By definition, E is the cheapest edge with one end in S and the other end in V minus S, and so by the cut property for point 17, it is in every minima spanning tree. It is also straightforward to show that Prime's algorithm produces a spanning tree of G, and hence it produces a minima spanning tree. When can we guarantee an edge is not in the minima spanning tree? The crucial fact about edge deletion is the following statement which we will refer to as the cycle property. 4.20. Assume that all H costs are distinct. Let C be any cycle in G, and let H E equals to VW be the most expensive H belonging to C, then E does not belong to any minima spanning tree of G. Proof let it be a spanning tree that contains E, we need to show that T does not have the minimum possible cost. By analogy with the proof of the cut property, 4.17, we'll do this with an exchange argument swapping E for a cheaper edge in such a way that we will still have a spanning tree. So again, the question is how do we find a cheaper edge that can be exchanged in this way with E? Let's begin by deleting E from T. This partitions the nodes into two components, S containing node V and V minus S containing node W. Now, the edge we use in place of E should have one end in S and the other in V minus S, so as to stitch the tree back together. We can find such an edge by following the cycle C. The edges of C other than E form, by definition, a path P with one end at V and the other at W. If we follow P if, from uh, V to W, w we begin in S and end up S in V minus up S. V so minus S. there is so some there H e prime on P that crosses from e S to V minus S. See if you give for point 11 for an illustration of S this. To now consider the set of edges C prime equals for point to 17, uh, T minus E then uh, union E prime. Which means that t prime equals to t remove h e then insert h e prime, arguing just uh, as in the proof of the cut property for point seventeen, the graph v t prime is connected and has no cycles. So t prime is a spanning tree of G. Moreover, since e is the most expensive edge on the cycle C, and e prime belongs to C. It must be that E prime is cheaper than E and has T prime is cheaper than T, as desired. The optimality of the reverse deletion algorithm. Now that we have the cycle property for point 20, it is easy to prove that the reverse delete algorithm produces a minimal spanning tree. The basic idea is analogous to the optimality proofs for the previous two algorithms. Reverse delete only adds an edge when it is justified by 4.20. 4.21, the reverse delete algorithm produces a minimal spanning tree of G. Proof, consider any edge equals to VW removed by reverse delete. At the time that E is removed, it lies on a cycle C, and since it is the first edge encountered by the algorithm in decreasing order of edge costs, it must be the most expensive edge on C. Thus, by 4.20, E does not belong to any minima spanning tree. So, if we show that the output VT of reverse delete is a spanning tree of G, we will be done. Clearly, VT is connected since the algorithm never removes an edge when this will disconnect the graph. Now, suppose 
by way of contradiction that Vt contains a cycle C. Consider the most expensive He on C, which would be the first one encountered by the algorithm. This edge should have been removed since its removal would not have disconnected the graph, and this contradicts the behavior of reverse delete. While we will not explore this further here, the combination of the cut property for point 17 and the cycle property for point 20 implies that something even more general is going on. Any algorithm that builds a spanning tree by repeatedly including agencies when justified by the cut property and uh, deleting agencies when justified by the cycle property, in any order at all will end up with a minimal spanning tree. This principle allows one to design natural greedy algorithms for this problem D beyond the three we have considered here, and it provides an explanation for why so many greedy algorithms produce optimal solutions for this problem, eliminating the assumption that all edge costs are distinct. Thus far, we have assumed that all edge costs are distinct, and this assumption has made the analysis cleaner in a number of places. Now suppose we are given an instance of the minimal spanning tree problem in which certain edges have the same cost. How can we conclude that the algorithms we have been discussing still provide optimal solutions? There turns out to be an easy way to do this. We simply take the instance and uh, perturb all edge costs by different, extremely small numbers so that they all become distinct. Now any two costs that differed originally will still have the same relative order since the perturbations are so small and since all of our algorithms are based on just uh, comparing edge costs. The perturbations effectively serve simply as tiebreakers to resolve comparisons among costs that used to be equal. Moreover, we claim that any minimal spanning tree T for the new perturbed instance must have also been a minimal spanning tree for the original instance. To see this, we note that if T cost more than some tree T star in the original instance, then, for small enough perturbations, the change in the cost of t cannot be enough to make it better than t star under the new costs. Thus, if we run any of our minimal spanning tree algorithms using the perturbed costs for comparing edges, we will produce a minimal spanning tree t that is also optimal for the original instance. Implementing Prime's Algorithm we next discuss how to implement the algorithms we have been considering so as to obtain good running time bouts. We will see that both primes and cross course algorithms can be implemented with the right choice of data structures to run in big O of m log n time. We will see how to do this for primes algorithm. Here, and defer discussing the implementation of cross course algorithm to the next section. Obtaining a running time close to this for the reverse delete algorithm is difficult. So we do not focus on reverse delete in this discussion. For Prime's algorithm, while the proof of correctness was quite different from the proof of the Dijkstra's algorithm for the shortest path algorithm, the implementations of Prime and the Dijkstra are almost identical. By analogy with um, Dijkstra's algorithm, we need to be able to decide which node V to add next to the growing set S by maintaining the attachment caused to alpha of V, which is equal to the minima of CE, where the minima is taken among all E, uh, which is equal to U V, uh, such that U is in S, and for each node V in V minus S. As before, we keep the nodes in the priority queue with uh, these attachment costs alpha of v as the keys. We select a node with an extract mean operation and update the attachment costs using change key operations. There are n minus 1 iterations in which we perform extract mean and we perform change key at most once for each age. Thus, we have 4.22 using a priority queue Prime's algorithm can be implemented on a graph with n nodes and m edges to run in big O of m time.
plus the time for and extract the mean and the and change key operations. As with the dice trust algorithm, if we find if we use a heap based priority queue, we can implement both extract mean and uh, change key in big O of log n time and uh, so get an overall running time of big O of m log n. Extensions. The minimal spanning tree problem emerged as a particular formulation of a border network design goal, finding a good way to connect a set of sites by installing addresses between them. A minimal spanning tree optimizes a particular goal, achieving connectedness with minimal total edge cost. But there are a range of further goals one might consider as well. We may, for example, be concerned about point-to-point -point distances in the spanning tree we build and be willing to reduce these even if we pay more for the set of agencies. This raises new issues since it is not hard to construct examples where the minimal spanning tree does not minimize point-to-point -point distances, suggesting some tension between these goals. Alternatively, we may care more about the congestion on the agencies. Given traffic that needs to be routed between pairs of nodes, one could seek a spanning tree in which no single edge carries more than a certain amount of this traffic. Here too, it is easy to find cases in which the minimal spanning tree ends up concentrating a lot of traffic on a single edge. More generally, it is reasonable to ask whether a spanning tree is even the right kind of solution to our network design problem, a tree has the property that destroying any one edge disconnects it, which means that trees are not at all robust against the failures. One could instead make resilience an explicit goal, for example seeking the cheapest connected network on the set of sites that remains connected after the deletion of any one edge. All of uh, these extensions lead to problems that are computationally much harder than the basic minimal spanning tree problem. Though so due to their importance in practice, there has been research on good heuristic for them.